Jay Young God, welcome to Overtime, all time Lebanese league legend, 2010 till 2018. You were in our courts, you left a very big impact. Uh, the impact you left is still being remembered until today. Uh, welcome to Overtime. Uh, for the people who don't know or don't remember, uh, Jay represented Lebanon, uh, the national team, as a Lebanese. Uh, he played 12 games, he won eight, and he won the West Asian Championship. He averaged 16.5 points, 5.3 rebounds, 2.75 assists in the stint of 12 games. As for the Lebanese League, he played from 2010 till 2018. Uh, Jay, you started with Chanville, then mm -hmm. you transferred to Anibal, then you yeah. went to Biblo, and then you ended your career in Lebanon with Sajaf. You averaged around uh, 234 league games. And you averaged 21.6 points per game with 4.8 rebounds, 4.2 assists, and 1.8 steals. And in this occasion, I would like to thank Lebanon Stats for providing us with all these numbers. They are our partner here in the show. They give us all the data and the uh, stats for every person who ever played in Lebanon. So uh, they have a big archive. So thanks to them. We got these stats from them. Uh, I'll send you these, uh, these images they sent me and these numbers. You can keep them. Uh, I appreciate it. The numbers don't lie. No need for a further introduction. Uh, Jay, <laughs> you've been missed. Man, I, I, I really, it means a lot to me, man. I really appreciate you having me on the platform. Um, you know, this is uh, something I kind of been waiting for for a while, just to kind of go back and reminisce and talk about the career in Lebanon, man. It was, it was a beautiful journey, man, from day one all the way into the last day. Uh, I, I really, really loved it out there. Jay, you played overseas other than Lebanon. Yeah, I, um, when I first started playing, man, I was uh, – the first country I went to was Poland. I was in Poland playing with this team called uh, Pol Pot, and I was only out there for about, like, two weeks, man. Um, me and the management, we didn't see eye to eye on this uh, – on a certain issue with the contract. So I ended up leaving, and um, from there I ended up going to Austria, and I played in Austria for four years. Um and that was that was like a great experience. It was a kind of an adjustment at first, just trying to learn the the style of play in Europe, which was totally different from college basketball, which I was used to. And um, but over time, man, I got comfortable. Uh, ended up winning an MVP over there. I made it to two finals while I was over there, won a cup. And uh, from there, man, that's where you know that's where I started. That's where I started my basketball career. Jay, how do you compare playing in Lebanon uh, to any other overseas country you played in? Um, I always tell people like, um, like Lebanon. I felt that it, it didn't get the 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 recognition it deserves. It, it's a, it's a tough it's a tough league. Um, I think people on the outside, like in Europe, I know I used to talk to a lot of agents, and they always say, hey, if you go to if you go to Asia or you go to the Middle East, then it's gonna be hard for you to come back to Europe. But I don't think that's the I don't think that's the the narrative anymore. I think people worldwide respect Lebanon. Be, just because they know more about it. And they also seen a couple of former NBA players come from Lebanon and go to the NBA. You know, that's that's kind of – that's happened a little bit more often now, you know. So, uh, I, I, I think Lebanon – the Lebanese Basketball League, in my opinion, is, is, is pretty good, man. Like, even some of the teams that I was on when we did training camps in Europe and we went to go scrimmage the other teams in Europe, like when I was in Biblos, like, man, we, we – man, we used to play good against those teams. Like, it wasn't like they was just kind of just – blowing us out or anything like that. We competed. I mean, it was games we won. It was games we lost. So that kind of just show you the level of the, you know, the Lebanese basketball right there. Jay, uh, you mentioned the NBA players that come and play in Lebanon. You have a nice history playing against NBA players here. You eliminated uh, NBA stack team with JJ Hickson and uh, Jeremy Pargo when they had Fadi, Ahmad, and Ristum. We will talk oh, about yeah. that historical season. I have a lot <laughs> of questions about the season. A lot of unanswered questions, actually. Uh, we'll come okay. back to them. Uh, Jay, okay. you started with Chanville. You won the Super Cup 2010-2011 mm -hmm. at the beginning. Uh, then you got suspended for testing positive for doping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, was, that, was, that was bogus, man. That was crazy. So, um, Was man, it look, intentional? That's... No, it wasn't intentional, and I wasn't the only – like, what I got kicked out for, and, and I'm so glad we were able to talk about this because I never really talked about this with anybody. What I got suspended for, 
everybody, it was, I ain't going to say everybody, but it was other players in the league doing the same exact thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, when I was in the room talking with these people about, like, oh, because I listed it on my I listed it on my paper. Hey, yo, I take this supplement. It was a pre-workout. You know what I'm saying? Every, it was multiple players taking this pre-workout. Because I heard the guy say in the room, hey, yeah, I take this, I take this. I'm like, oh, he told him he take that. I, I take the same thing. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to miss nothing out, just being honest. And then, boom, they use it. <laughs> They use it against me, like, like you know what I'm saying? Like, I was doing something, like, I was cheating or something like that, man. And it was, uh, that was one of, like, the most bogus moments in my career, man, because if anybody know me, they know that you know, I'm a hard worker, man. I work hard for any and everything that I, I have, you know what I'm saying? And um, that was kind of, like, just a bogus moment. Um, but, you know, that, there was a lot going on in Chanville at that time, man. Like, um, is it cool if I talk about it? Like, the, you know, sure, going sure, to detail? Sure, sure. Yeah, so, like. When I first got to Chanville, man, like everything was everything was perfect. You know, we won eleven games in a row when the season started. Like we were on a high. Everything was good. Everything was smooth. We went to Waba and uh, you know, we played good. We beat Maharam, the team out in Iran, you know, played good in that. And then we came back to Lebanon. When we came back to Lebanon, I had got a call that my best friend was uh killed in Detroit. You know what I'm saying? He was killed in a car accident. And I mean, it just took me from a high, man, where I was like, I mean, I could not ask for anything better than what was going on at Chanville, man. Sarkis was happy with me. Fatty was happy with me. Everything was going good, man. And then when that happened, it was just like a, I was in this dark space, man. And as a young young kid, man, you know, I didn't know how to deal with that, man. So I had kind of I, – I, I really needed therapy. That's what I needed, but I just didn't know how to deal with it, man. So I was taking it out on basketball. I kind of closed myself off to the teammates or whatnot, man. And the energy was just off. It wasn't the same, man. And I think a big part of that was it had to do with me. You know what I'm saying? A big part of that had to do with me. And um, I think that was more so the reason they wanted to change for get two new foreigners in there rather than having me and Larry because they felt that, you know, we had hit this, we had hit a wall. We weren't playing good basketball at the right time. So they, you know, they switched us out. And, you know, I wish things would have been different, man. Like, but I hated the way that ended because you know if they, if it was really that bad, they they wouldn't have brought us back for uh they they brought me back for uh the West Asia games a couple of uh, weeks later. You know we went we was playing at Abu Dhabi, you know, and uh, ended up playing against Riyadi, ended up beating Riyadi out there, and um, you know it was it was a good time, man. But yeah, that that was. It was unfortunate how that that Chumville situation ended, but you know, I still talk to Coach Sarkis, man, and and I got mad respect for Coach Sarkis. Do you think like at one time, uh, whenever you got this positive doping result, you were like shit, my career is ruined? No, nah, no, nah, because it wasn't it wasn't like I was getting messages from FIBA or anything. All the messages was coming stri- strictly from the fe- uh, the Lebanese Federation. It wasn't like FIBA was you know, contacting me and letting me know, like, even the suspension, it was only, it was a 30 day suspension. Like when you have never heard of a foreigner being suspended for 30 days, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I, I went to, I went to Venezuela in that time, man. And that, and that was the only thing that kind of pissed me off is that I couldn't play in Venezuela because they were saying like, you know, it was a 30 day suspension and, you know, I was down there practicing for two weeks and I'm just like, man, <laughs> I, but I was never nervous. I'll just keep it short. I was never nervous that my career was going to be over. Like, I, I barely took that suspension serious because it was like I didn't feel like I was doing anything illegal. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like I was taking some HGH. It was a, you know, pre-workout that people use just to, you know, before they go work out or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? Is there a chance that Chomfield made this all up or, like, fabricated this just to change you? And, uh, like, in my opinion, I always I felt that way. I always felt that way. Me and Larry talked about that a lot. Like, and then the crazy thing is that they changed Larry. We, with our last game was we played against Suggest. I played terrible, but if you go back and watch that game, Larry probably played, yeah, like 28 and 15. For and people so right who don't know who's Larry, it's Larry Cox. Oh, sorry. Larry Cox. I'm sorry. Yeah, Larry Cox. He was the center for us. He was the other foreigner that I played with that whole year. And Larry had a great game. Like, um... And it was just like I think they just wanted to change the scenery for the for the playoffs or whatnot, man. Which you see a lot of teams still do to this day, you know, just kind of switch the foreigners out before the playoffs start. Jay, the next season you played with Anibal, you lost three one in the finals against Chanville. Next 
the 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 one after it played with Biblos, lost uh, against Muttahad three two in the final eight in the playoffs. Then you played with Biblos again, lost against Riyadi three zero in the finals. Again with Biblos, also lost against Riyadi in the finals four one. The next year with Biblos, lost against Muttahad in the playoffs three two. Mm. Again Biblos lost against Riyadi, and finally with Sajjad, you lost against Hamantman in the final four after this. Very weird season, actually. Uh, mm. How do you summarize your experience in Lebanon? Like it's eight years. How how satisfied were you playing in Lebanon? Like environment wise, people wise, coaching wise, the level of the game. How was it all uh, coming into place for you for you to stay for eight straight years in the league? Um, man, when I had got to Biblos, it was more so like it wasn't like business. It was more so like a family situation with like um, the Hawat family, the uh, Sphere family, Joe Sphere, Basim Sphere, Nabil Hawat. Um, all of those people were like John Mark. All of them were like family, man. And the and the and the citizens there in the city of Jabal also made me feel like family. But I think that was more so like the citizens and the citizens in Lebanon. Period. They showed me so much love and they were so welcoming. Like it made it easy for me to live over there. Like I never had a worry. Um, I always enjoyed myself. If it was anything that you know what I'm saying was like something that was on a negative vibration, it was coming from me doing something. It wasn't from the people. It was more so me kind of being immature to that nature. But the people of Lebanon. They showed me a lot of love, man, and I think it was a. Uh, I think they knew that while I was there. I got a lot of good relationships with teammates, um, you know, managers, uh, just random people, man. Like, you know, I, I I got a special place in my heart for Lebanon, and um, the experience in the eight years. That's why it was always exciting for me to come back. Like, I was always trying to do something new. Um, or create something new on the basketball court, but you know, the things off the court as well, man. They was just. It was just a beautiful life, man. I I really enjoyed Lebanon, man. It was it was something I talk about all the time, like with my 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 friends back here, back home. I'm always telling them, like, listen, man, if you get a chance to go, you know, vacation or something, you want to have a good time, like, hey, go to Lebanon, like, you you know, I'm telling you, trust me, you got to take my word on this, go experience it. So those eight years, man, was something that I'll never forget. It was like really the high point of my life, and you know, I'm creating new high points now, but. Like, for sure, those eight years was, like, eight years that I'll never forget. But, yeah, man, those eight years, uh, they were they were amazing. Uh, like, a second to none, I always tell my family and friends about Lebanon. So, uh, it's, it's kind of hard to even describe with words just what that experience was like. Um, but it was a beautiful experience. Jay, uh, transitioning from your country to a new country uh, like Lebanon, what are the difficulties you faced here the first time you came? Um, man, it wasn't too many. All right. So the power outages, that's, that was the only thing that really kind of internet being as slow as it was when I first got there. Um, that was the only irritating thing. Like, you know, cause I wasn't partying my first year. I didn't do nothing. I, I stayed in the house all the time. So, you know, I'm in the house playing the PlayStation. Uh, and sometimes, you know, you, you're doing good in PlayStation playing a game or something and then boom. Six o'clock come around, the power turned off. You like, yo. I still remember six o'clock. Yeah, six o'clock. You know what I mean? The power turned off. And uh, but that was the only adjustment, man. Like the internet, that was the only thing at that time. Like, man, the internet's slow. And then the power turned off, but those wasn't nothing, nothing major. You know what I'm saying? Those only adjustments. Uh everybody spoke English. Way more people spoke English in Lebanon than they did in Austria. So that was uh more convenient for me. But yeah, it wasn't too many uh it wasn't too much of an adjustment. It was it was pretty cool. Jay, who was the first person to contact you to come to Lebanon? Samir. Um, oh no no no! It wasn't even Samir. It was his partner. Uh, oh my goodness, man! Why am I going blank right now? His father works at Chomville. Uh, I forgot his name, man. He used to drive a little hybrid. He always used to brag about how he had a hybrid. His son and Samir, they were partners. They contacted me while I was in Austria. Like, hey, they had contacted me the year prior, but I wanted to do one more year in Austria. And then they had wrote me again, like, because I was at home waiting. It was late. And I'm like, man, what's going on? Like, so when I heard, when they wrote me again, I'm just like, you know what? I'm about to just take a chance. I had called some people that played in Lebanon before, like Mike Frazier. He had played over there. Another my friend, Bingo, 
I think Bingo uh, played in Lebanon for a little bit. So these are two guys that I had a good relationship with. And they like, man, you need to go. Like, go check it out. Like, it's a beautiful place. So when I got there, man, it was, you know, they weren't lying about it. It was a beautiful place. <laughs> Jay, how difficult was it for you to adapt to the new coaching style, to the new players? The physical abilities of our players are not the same as the physical abilities of the players in Europe and the U.S. Uh, the level of skills, the, the facilities we have, they're not up to date with the with the same level we have in Europe or in the U.S. or whatever. Uh, how did you adapt to that? Um, I, man, for me, I always been one to like look at each new situation as like you got to go prove yourself. So I, re- I, re- I wasn't so much thinking like, man, this, these these living situations, this this gym is out 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 of date. I was more so looking at a new opportunity to establish myself as a basketball player that could play and that be able to, um, you know, saying build a career out there. So I was excited, man. Like um, the, the style of play, it was more, it was a different from the aspect in Europe. It was more so like team aspect running sets. And, and when I got to Lebanon, it was more so like they want the foreigners to do more uh, or, you know what I'm saying? You had more, way more freedom to kind of be yourself. Um, it was tough at first because Sarkis had me coming off the bench in Chomville, and I was like, I'm just like, man, okay, you know, whatever. Like, I'm just going to do whatever I need to do in order for the team to win or, and just be in a winning situation. So, you know, everybody happy, and I'm good. And then, we'll, you know, I ain't, I ain't tripping. But I was like, if you go back and look, I was averaging 20 points in Chomville. I was only playing three quarters because the whole first quarter, Mazen was starting. So Mazen, my brother, I love Mazen. But I was—I <laughs> I should have been starting off as soon as I got there. Jay, uh, for the for the experience you had in Lebanon, for the eight years you spent in Lebanon, how did this reflect on you personally, on a personal level, on your growth as a person, not in basketball? As a as a person, man, like it wasn't like I, I look at Lebanon and I, I feel like if I would have been more mature and. Uh, just decision making or whatnot, man. That I'll probably still be in Lebanon like right now, but I wasn't. I wasn't mature in my decision making, man. And I think that kind of it hurt me. You know what I'm saying? Like, in in the last year, and suggest like, um, you know that 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 kind of it, it was it was tough, man. That was tough. I know we'll talk probably talk about it later, but trying to adjust to that a situation financially it was it was hard. You know what I'm saying? But it kind of put me in this perspective of like. Yo, this 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 is what it might be when you you know transition from basketball and, and end up playing like having to go back home, get a job, and transition. This is what it might that suggest situation had me thinking like that, and I think that's where you know, man, like I was tired of dealing with that type of stuff. You know that that year, man, that 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 was a it was a fun year, but it was mentally draining. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, yeah, super yeah. draining. You know what I'm saying? Jay, did you get any offers after the suggest here from Lebanon and you rejected them? And from who? No, no, bro. Man, listen. I was so mad at Beirut, man. Beirut was supposed to bring me back over. They were supposed to bring me over there to play with Chris Crawford. Um, so I was in Saudi Arabia. I didn't hear nothing from no nobody in Lebanon. Suggest I was just I told myself I wasn't dealing with that again, like just kind of, you know, getting paid late and all of that. Uh, no one makes the same mistake twice. Yeah, I couldn't do it. I was just like, and I really didn't want to leave Lebanon, man. Like, I wanted to stay in Lebanon. Like, I knew the league pretty well. Um, I thought that, man, well, I know we're going to talk about that suggest thing, but I'm telling you, man, that, that oh, my goodness, man. It, it just, it kind of shuffled a lot of things in the wrong direction. And I what's what's the story with Beirut? What's the story with Beirut? Well, Misha was the head coach over there. Um, Misha... Who? Me oh, Mildred Mildred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, you know, that's who I played. That's who I played with in the uh, Anibal. So he's talking to me. He's he's like, Jay, listen, man, I I you know, I got this job, man. If if I want you, I want to bring you over here. And I'm like, shit, hell yeah, coach. Like, yo, me and Chris Crawford, and I'm telling I'm talking to Chris on WhatsApp, like, hey bro, I heard it. They saying they might bring you, bro. I'm like, hey, listen, man, if I come, bro, we it's gonna be a good situation. Man, they never. They ended up signing some other guy, and I ended up staying in Saudi, man. And it was just like, I, me and Misha, man, I was like, me and him, like, kind of stopped talking after that because I was mad, like, I was, I was salty. 
I was in Saudi. Saudi was cool. I liked the the experience of being a Jeddah. Like it was a great experience. But like I was trying to get like I'm, I consider Lebanon home in a sense. Was it you know? was it the year they signed Justin Dentman? Was it Justin Dentman? Um, it might have been him, or it, I don't. I can't remember, man. I cannot remember because they. I think, man, like the year before, they had some European out there, man. But I we used to kill Beirut, and um. Well, we had some wars with Beirut, but I think when I was in Suggest, we beat them maybe two or three times. And yeah. um, I was just, I thought it would have been a good fit, but you know, I was just like, the, the Saudi Arabia offer was, it was legit. It was good money. So I was just like, I'm out of there. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm just, I stay in Saudi. I'm good. Jay, looking back to your previous experience, uh, what advice do you give for uh, people coming from abroad to play in Lebanon? Um, I, Like, I was always saying this while I was there, and I said to my own advice, like, always just keep the main thing the main thing because uh, I feel like when you you, you respect the game, uh, you being consistent in your approach and, and your performance, you will be good. But I know sometimes you get derailed with the off-the-court stuff. You know what I mean? I'm not speaking for everybody, but I, I've seen it a couple of times while I was over there. You know what I'm saying? You get distracted with the, you know, the nightlife or whatnot. And so your priorities kind of switch up. But I would just tell anybody that's a foreigner, like, you know, keep the main thing the main thing. You know what I mean? Just just try to focus on being the best version of yourself, and I think everything else will take care of itself. Jay, uh, at your time in Lebanon also, uh, there's something special you developed. There's something you can never forget. There's something you didn't have in you, and it's it like it popped out uh, when you were in Lebanon. You develop this certain trait in your personality, in your game, and anything. What's that small something that you can never forget from Lebanon? Um, dang, that's a good question, man. I'm trying to think. I think the one thing I learned from Lebanon was that it, it opened my mind to like different ways of life. Like, Lebanon opened my mind to that, you know what I'm saying? Being a half-Muslim, half-Christian country, you know, I learned a lot from both sides, man, while I was there. And not just, you know, me, Mazen, and, um, I don't know if y'all remember, Yayo, uh, what was it? Yeah, 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 yeah. So me, Mazen, and Yayo, we used to have all these conversations about, like, religion and stuff, but it, it wasn't, like, you know, intense or nothing like that, man. It was just like us talking as brothers and we was cool. It was, so that was one main thing I learned in Lebanon was like, you know, even if you don't agree with a way of living or a way of thinking, you know what I'm saying, or somebody's beliefs, that don't mean that that y'all gotta have, you know, animosity towards one another. Like, you can still have a good time. Like, Mazen and Yayo, like, those two people that, like, Mazin is my brother. Like, Yayo, my brother. I, I still talk to those guys to to this day. You know what I'm saying? I have great relationships with them. So, like, that was one of the main things I I say I would de I develop just a, a more mature way of thinking and seeing, um you know, different beliefs or whatnot. Jay, you played with four different teams in Lebanon. I want from you, you're never going to dig deep in the Lebanese league. Okay. I want from you to give me one memory you will never forget with each, with each team. Let's well, start with Chanville. Let's start in order. Chanville. Chanville. Um, the Chanville, man, I'll never forget. Uh, I think that Maharam win was was a real big win. Because uh, I didn't know, I didn't realize the the magnitude of that team and just how much they were respected and how big of a budget they had. And I just remember us, you know, kind of we was in Jordan and everybody kind of just talking about this game, talking about it and, really, you know, being amped up for it. And, uh, man, we we played, we, we, it was like, man, we went to war that game, man, and ended up winning. And I just remember, like, everybody being so excited about it and, it, like, it kept our winning streak alive, man. We were, I don't know, man, but Chonville was, it was just, that was probably one of the best moments, man. Like, getting there, you know, meeting Fatty, Coach Sarkis, that was all just like the beginning of, you know what I'm saying, the journey in Lebanon. And it was a beautiful uh, moment. Anibal, uh winning the Dubai Championship in Anibal with uh with EB, Gallup, all of those guys, man, Misha. 
Drug like, rod, rod, man. Like that was. Now that was Annabelle, man. Like I, I, that was I, unexpected, I, I, actually. Huh? That was unexpected for the Lebanese people, for the Lebanese uh, community, for the people who actually like uh, some people here. They prefer to uh, say like this seems an underdog. This seems a favorite. You were, you guys were never a favorite to win this uh, this tournament. So oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we considering yeah, we, we were that. the underdogs. Yeah, we 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 knew that. Like we knew that we weren't favorite to win. Like everybody was expecting us to kind of to lose or whatnot. But that was the best part of it, man. Like and playing with guys like Gallup, man. I, mean, I remember Gallup just getting hot in that championship game. Um, at the beginning of the game, man, it was it was fun, man. It was just a whole bunch of fun. So that was probably the highlight of that the, the Dubai Championship. Um, Jay, do you think Ghalib's disciplinary issues and his off court problems uh, held him back from having a better career? I mean, from the time that I played with Gallup, like man, listen, Gallup was a player that I would play with any day of the week. Like any team that I was in on in Lebanon, I would want him. I don't think that. Sometimes, man, you got to understand players and, and know players and their personalities, and then you got to know how to coach them. And I thought Misha did a great job with Gallup. Like, you know, it was some <laughs> it was some tough practices, you know, and some things said at certain practices. But at the end of the, at the, end of the day, I think everybody respected one another, and that's why that team uh, did so well. But, no, Gallup is, like, one of the – he's one of the best players that I played with, like, skill-wise in Lebanon for sure, and defensively. How about Fadi? Do you think that he belonged to the NBA at one point of his career? Um, I mean, from what I saw at Fadi, like, I, I, I first seen Fadi, I think it was 2010, 2011. Um, I don't know if he was an NBA, like, at that point, but I ain't gonna lie, like, Fadi showed me that he could really, like, he could get down, he could hoop, like, he could really hoop. Um, he, he, he just was... He got a good IQ. I think Fatty IQ is underrated. I think that he's a very intelligent basketball player. He know how to get to his spots. Um, he he a great scorer. Yeah, man, he was he, he was a tough tough guy. But yeah, I heard that you know what I'm saying like I heard that in his prime, like he was he could have he, he might have had a chance to play in the NBA. He actually had a contract with the Clippers, but uh, club president back then uh, Tajes uh, rejected his uh, his uh, departure. Boy, that that might, uh, man, I suggest, boy. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, okay, Jay, so, okay. Let's yeah. continue with B-Blows. B-Blows. Um, I think the, you know, man, listen, that the B-Blows contract, like, I wasn't even supposed to, I, I wasn't, playing. I thought that after I left Annabelle that I was going to, to somewhere, like a big team or, you know what I mean, going to get a super duper crazy contract because we had such a great year. Um, and so going to B Bloss, it was unexpected, man. But when I took that contract in B Bloss, I was motivated to like I wanted to win, you know what I'm saying? I wanted because I had seen where the team was before. They, you know, it was a couple games they won, they upset some teams, but I know they wanted to get to the final four. So I think the highlight of the B Bloss was when we actually made it to the finals with that team. And um, even though we lost in the finals, man, just getting there was it was such an, a major accomplishment for us because of where we had came from, you know what I'm saying? The first year you lose to get to the final four, the next year you get to the final four, the next year you get to the finals. It was, uh, so that was like the highlight for me, uh, getting to the finals with B-Blows. Last but not least. Suggest, man, suggest. The highlight of that was beating that Chonville team, man. That was all that felt, it, it felt so good because it was like, you know. You proved the I, point. Yeah, it was just one of the things like, look, man, y'all do this all the time. Y'all always try to sign high level foreigners at the end of the season. But in, in our eyes, it's like, yo, it's disrespect because we've been putting. We work got you there. Yeah, we got yeah, you there. Yeah, man, like you've been working all season and then you make this change and you don't know how it's going to factor in. So it suggests I thought, we, you know, we had a good team, man. Like the chemistry was pretty good between the foreigners and the locals. And Considering you guys didn't practice due to financial issues. Oh, we uh, see that. I think that, that we did practice though. We, 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 our practices wasn't like, all right. So when I was with Nate Nad and, and B Blows, like, you, you know, it was like a college practice almost. You know what I'm saying? When we was with Fouad, okay, you warm up, you go through a couple of drills, and then we just gonna hoop. And then we just hoop, but it was competitive basketball though. You know what I'm saying? So uh, that's, I thought, where Fouad like kind of won 
as far as in the coaching aspect because he know that like you need to hope to build chemistry. We gotta get we got we gotta build chemistry, but at the same time, I can't put these guys through no crazy practice or no intense practice. One, they not getting paid, but two, you know what I'm saying? I, I want to keep them happy. Like he 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 did a good job of balancing it all out. And um Paul's considered one of one of the best managers, uh, aside from being one of the best coaches in Lebanon. Yeah, for a while, he was uh, for sure one of my favorite coaches. He he always, you know, he helped out when he could. Um, and Coach Joe, Coach, Coach Joe's a good coach too, man, uh, over at Home Amendment. He's a real good coach. Coach John Jaws. Yeah, he, he he a real. You know, uh, a, most most Americans, whenever they come to the league, uh, they really appreciate Coach Joe for one thing. His philosophy is bring me stops and do whatever you want on offense. I don't care. Just get me stops. Oh, yeah, yeah, man. Sure. That I, that man, thing man. Oh, that God. thing makes makes the player very comfortable playing his offensive game with no pressure. Some coaches they tell you, uh, "I need <laughs> this." Uh, you miss two shots, you're out. You're on the bench. Yeah, you, man. you get you get pressured if you miss the first one. Oh shit! I'm gonna miss the second one. Oh shit! I'm out. So yeah, coach, the, coach, the freedom coach, coach, coach Joe, like, Joe gives. That, that's probably the most freedom I had as a basketball player in my career, like in my my whole entire career, like. I used to try stuff in practice, like, hey, I'm about to shoot a, you know, I'm feeling good. I'm about to shoot a pull-up from deep. And, and I, it, he never said nothing. Even if I missed it, he didn't say nothing. Just bring just back, get back on defense. Yeah, yeah, he wasn't tripping. But I wasn't a player where I was just going to abuse that. Like I'm about to, But, you know, in games where I felt like I had it going and I wanted to pull up from deep, he would let me and not and not trip about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's – if you go back and watch that first year in b Blows, man, it was a couple games where <laughs> – you know, I said I just got in the rhythm, man, and he just letting me like he just letting me go. Like he was he trusted me out there. And uh he had some of the best pregame speeches too, man. I rock with Coach Joe. Good guy. Shout out to Coach Joe. He was already our guest here and he's a brother to me. So oh, okay. I really, I'm really happy hearing this. No. Nah, Jay, was- uh you were not getting paid. Yet you played versus JJ Hickson, Jeremy Pargo, Fadi, AI, Rustum, Coach Hassan. And you won. What kept you motivated to actually go to the game and fight for the game? Um, I think me, I, I think that whole entire team just, you know, we was really kind of playing for one another, but also playing for, like, I know for me, man, I, I really was playing for the fans. Like, the fans, like, Suggest fans, man, they, I separate, I, I feel like Suggest fans and Suggest management is two different entities. It's, it's two different parties. You feel what I'm saying? I, I don't I don't talk about them in the same breath. The fans, they die hard fans. They, they're willing to do whatever. Like, there's some people in, I, I won't name, but like when we weren't getting paid, they like, hey, come over here, man. Like, I'll give you, you get this, you get this food for free. Hey, hey, you need something? Just call me, let me know. Hey, you need this? Like, th- this wasn't the management. These were the fans calling willing to help me in these type of situations, you know what I mean? And I'm just like, damn, like, so I will, you know, that on top of just, you know, being taking pride in who I am as a basketball player, that's why we were highly motivated, man. Like, if I didn't, man, like, the only reason, like, if I don't get hurt that game, I got hurt in that game five, and people don't even know. It just, the, the injury just got worse when we ended up playing commitment in game one. Um, and I couldn't play no more, so it ended my season when I tore my plantar fasciitis. But I really liked our chances against Home Amendment, man. I really would have wished – I wish we would have seen us healthy play against that team. You know what I'm saying? Because I thought we had a chance. Jay, did you think at some point the management uh, you were under at Sajas did not deserve these fans? Shit, I didn't think they deserved – I didn't think they deserved us, man. Like, they, it was so many lies told, bro, like, hey, you know, you're going to get paid here. Hey, you gonna, hey, y'all beat this team, you're going to get paid. Oh, y'all do this, you're going to get paid. So when we beat Chonville, I'm thinking like, oh, shoot, we about to get a big sponsor company. That, that's how they was playing it, you know. Oh, you got to – I remember they bought this burger company in, yeah, man. It was – I'm like, man, if y'all get these damn burgers out of here, bro, like, where the money at? Like, I don't – fuck a burger. Excuse my language. Like, I don't want no burger, man. I want, I want some money, bro. Like, where is the money? So, now, I, I thought the management did a terrible job, man. I thought they were lying about certain situations, but this don't reflect the – this don't reflect the fans. And I think that's the, like, a player like me, man, like, yeah, I'm passionate about any club that I play for, especially if it's somebody showing me love. 
the way they were showing love. You know what I'm saying? Any other foreigner I know for a fact would have left probably in the middle of the season. You know, I wasn't going to management talk. Like, my relationship with the Suggest management wasn't like it was with the B-Blows management. B-Blows management, you know, I, I communicated with them consistently. Uh, you know, they let me know if the money was going to be late. I could be in the States and they'd be like, okay, Jay, send me a bank account. We're going to we're gonna take care of that. We got the money in. You know what I'm saying? So just, it, it just felt like they were stringing us along. They were trying to see how much they could get out of us. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they milked us. They milked it, man. Like, So they made money off of you? Man, they for sure made money. If they was, like, every time that we was going to play Chomville in that playoff series, the, the, the gym was jam-packed. Majority of the time we was playing, the gym was packed, sold out. You know what I mean? Like, we were one of the best teams in the league. Like, people was coming to see us. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like we was just terrible when we was losing. Uh, we, we, had it, we had it going, man. But I just, you know, that was real confusing, man. I mean, you got people coming up to you day before games talking about, oh, man, I'm about to, I got you. You know, I got you. It's, it's okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. And it's the end of the season coming around. It's a. Hey, you said don't worry. Shit, they still owe me some money. Like I'm still. I mean, I ain't fighting for it, but it's just like, man, it, it, it's. You know, I feel I'm a big believer in you know whatever you put out is gonna come back to you, and until suggest management figure out they want to start moving like a respectable uh, organization, then it's gonna always be in. The situations that they're in. I mean, I don't know what the current state is right now. It looks like they're doing solid, but, you know, I know they just got a history of kind of just doing players wrong. No, the management recently for the past three, four years, was it was a stable one. Uh, no no debts. Uh, mm -hmm. Checks get given on time. This year we have a new management. Uh, same financial stability. Uh, very high budget. Everything is perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately for you, that wasn't at your time. But... Yeah. Uh, it's 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 good to see the uh, the club being healthy again. Uh, Jay, uh, what about your previous uh, experiences with different coaches in Lebanon? Who left a mark on you? Um, Nana Nana Vucinic, the coach that I played for in uh, Lebanon, like he um like man, we used to have a lot of conversations and whatnot, man. And what he was trying to get me to think or the mindset he was trying to get me to have on a consistent basis was like predicated towards lasting for the for the future and you know i heard him and it was one in one ear out the other at times sometimes i download everything he was trying to teach me but like a lot of the sets and just being a student of the game i i, I kept all of that with me like even coaching right now in high school like i use some of the sets that we were using in b-blows you know what i'm saying i use some of the practice schemes or drills that we were doing in b-blows he was just him and uh, the assistant coach jovan they just really they uh they left a major imprint on my on my career. Jay, who's one player you wanted to play with in Lebanon, but you didn't get the chance to do the, to do so? Um, I always like that I never got the chance to play with. I played with him on a national team, like I played with YL on a national team, but I thought that like. I always wanted to see what that would look like if, you know what I'm saying, if he would have came over to b Blows from the point guard perspective, just having somebody that elite and explosive in a fast break. I thought that would have fit good with our team. Um, he was he was somebody that, you know, him and uh, H Haidar. I wish I had Ali Haider because Ali Haider could pick and pop. That's the, Those are the type of players I like playing with. You know, I found a lot of success with fours that, that could shoot. And Ali Hyder was a consistent shooter, strong. He could score under the basket. Um, those, I, those are two players that come to mind that I didn't play with while I was playing in Lebanon. Jay, who's the person who defended you best? Uh, it'll be between John and uh, John, John and Gallup. Like those two. I mean, Gallup. I think Gallup was a tougher defender than John. John just had that attitude where he ain't gonna give up. He gonna he gonna be there even when you like fourth quarter. He's still gonna be right there in your face fighting over the screens, you know, pushing you off of screens and stuff like that. Gallup, he was just the physicality. He was strong. Like, he was just as strong as I was as, you know, there weren't too many guards I felt that were stronger than me, but he was just as strong. He was physical. He had good hands, too. So, like, it would be between those two. Like, those are two I used to, like, get amped up to play against. And 
one of the best foreigners you played with and one of the best foreigners you played against? One of the best foreigners I played with, it would be a split between, ooh, would it be a three-way split? It's a three-way split, man. It's a three-way split between E.B., Leroy Hurd, and Rocco, Rocco Varda. Rocco Varda was probably my favorite teammate. Like, he was one of my favorite teammates for sure. Uh, for the uh, foreigners, you didn't get the chance to play with. Oh, who was tough? Oh, someone that was tough. Like, man, one person I always kind of – Spence uh, Spence was good, man. Like, Spence, especially when he first came to Riyadi, like, you, I didn't know his game, and he was real good at, like, moving without the ball, like, and he was real efficient shooting. He was tough, and then uh, Walter Hodge was another tough cover. He was a tough cover. So I'll say those in between those two. Jay, did you expect uh, the call to represent the national team? No, because it, it, they they were uh, they seemed so infatuated with like having Fatty on their team or whatnot, man. It, I mean, not Fatty, but uh, Lauren Woods as a center. That I didn't think that uh you know that I would be getting a call over the summertime. Um, that was one thing I regret. I wished would have went like because we won Waba and. You know, they didn't bring me back. I wish they would have kept me. and I could have stayed that whole summer to actually train with the team. Like, I got there a day before the actual game. Like, that was the wildest shit, bro. Like, I, I had to catch four planes to get to Asia from Detroit and then play, like, a couple hours later. I didn't have no, no training with the team or nothing. But, uh, I mean, I thought I did solid for, you know, the time that they had brought me over there and the time that I had with the team. But – I wish I would have had like a fair shot where it was like I did a whole training camp with the squad. Now we're going into Waba. It would have, I think it would have been different. Jay, do you remember the play we were playing against Riyadi with uh, Sajas and you split the double team and you went and posterized the center? <laughs> I love this game. So let it J Young blood. Mish Maul, Mish Maul, man, let's let it J. To stay, we'll see a mirror and what it's going to be. Oh, Mama, Maul, yeah, J. Oh yeah, uh, it was it was Duby. Duby was down there. Ali Hader was down there. Now I remember that. Like <laughs> that was like man, that's. That's like was it the, was it one of the best plays you had in your career? Splitting down yeah. the double team and posterizing the man in the paint. Yeah, that was like one of the um, like one of the, the plays that stuck out the most. Just the the dynamic of the game, like you know, being the suggest reality game, and just uh, it was a momentum shift for us. Like I think we were down, we were coming back, but I don't know, man. When I split that screen, the lane just seemed it just parted. It just parted open. I'm like, man, I'm about to. <laughs> I want to see what's going to happen. And then a couple people jumped. And, man, I just I just remember just going up trying to dunk it. And the reaction, I'll never forget that reaction. It got so loud in the Green Castle, man. It was, <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, that was, that was, that was crazy. Jay, are the Suggest fans the biggest and the most loudest fan base you played with? Yeah, no, nah, for sure. They, they for sure the loudest, uh, probably the loudest fan base. The Annabelle fans were good too, man. Like, I thought that, you know, we had a smaller gym, but, man, they those fans up there were pretty – they were pretty hostile. They they liked, you know, basketball. But the Suggest fans, like – I mean, even when I didn't play for Suggest, even when you go in there, you got to deal with those fans. And it's, it's – it's you know, I think it's just something that the Lebanese basketball always need. You always need the Suggest fans as a part of the game. Jay, why do we see people coming from the NBA, like Pargo, like Hickson, like many other players? They don't have a successful career in Lebanon. Terrell told me one thing. He said they come for the cash. They don't care about playing. I mean, I think in some aspects, it, that is it. You know, sometimes if you just come in for a money grab that, you know, I think the basketball guys, they're not going to reward that. But if you come in to actually hoop and put on a show and, and showcase your talent, um, I think it will be a different narrative. Because I have seen NBA players come over. Like Marcus Haslip, when he came over, man, like. He won the yeah, league. He won the league, bro. Like single handedly with Sam Hoskins. Yeah, like that was that was crazy. And that was another thing, like, 
you know, some like sometimes it's a gamble, man. It's a gamble. I think that it all depends on who your teammates are, like who understands you. Um, but like, yeah, sometimes if you see an NBA guy come over and they not have immediate success, um, I think it's just because they've been asked to do a lot in such little time. You know what I mean? Like, gelling with a person like right away, man, that's tough. You know what I mean? I, I can only imagine being called over to have to play a Final Four. And you just throw them right in the fire. You don't know the style of play. You, it's, it's kind of tough. Jay, did you watch the league last year? At least the finals? The Lebanese league? No, I wasn't able to watch it, man. Like, because, you know, being here coaching and whatnot, man, I'll I be, I be in my own zone and training and stuff. But I always – I try to keep up, like, through the apps and stuff like that. We had a player called Dio Priest. He's on the NBA with the Portland Trailblazers. Oh, yeah, he on my fantasy basketball team. Yeah, <laughs> he's now in the NBA. He was in the Lebanese league last year. Uh, another example is Hassan Whiteside. He was here and then he uh, transferred to the NBA. How uh, how important is it for the Lebanese league as exposure? And how tough uh, is it proving to be whenever you have players coming from the Lebanese league going to the NBA? I mean, I think no, that... No thing. Sorry, noting that Hassan Whiteside's experience in the NBA after Lebanon and Diop's experience in the NBA after Lebanon is their first time. It's not their second time. They weren't there before. It's their first time. I mean, I, I just think that it, it just it just shows you that you can find talent anywhere. The game, so like, it's so advanced now and it's spread out worldwide. Like, you really can find talent anywhere. And I think, you know, NBA scout, they they looking at who these foreigners are playing against, who the other foreigners that they're playing against. So I think that's that that's going to put always put a bright light onto what our league is doing. I mean, prime example, Whiteside goes to play with the Heat after he leave Mutahead, right? Um, you know, they they speaking on Lebanon, speaking on Lebanon. I had an NBA like a guy that's a scout, an NBA scout that I know personally. He hit me up about YL. He was asking me about YL, like how good he was, and you know what I'm saying, what level he could play at, you know, before uh, he. And I think YL ended up going to to just expose Dallas Mavericks. Yeah, yeah, yep. He ended up going to play with the Mavericks, but before that, he ended up going playing in this exposure camp in Europe. And the guy had seen him, you know what I'm saying, and liked him. You know, he said he needed to develop some things, but this when he was younger. And I just think that, uh, you know, like I said, man, I think it's good for for the Lebanese league to to have guys that played in a league or playing the NBA. One of the moments that one of the worst moments was me tearing my, my plantar fasciitis against a uh, home Amendment. And that was one, I did not want to end my career in Lebanon that way, where it was like with an injury, you know what I'm saying? I wanted people to see me, you know, playing, competing and walking off the basketball court, you know, win or lose, you know, win or loss, you know what I'm saying? But that kind of still stick with me because I didn't, I didn't leave Lebanon the way I wanted to. So, um, I would say that's like the the one thing that probably burned the most. That was the bad moment for me in Lebanon. Outside of that, you know, man, everything was good. You know what I'm saying? It was. It was a. Jay, was a, we're gonna take a few questions for, from the fans. Okay, there was okay. one question that really, 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 I'm looking forward for the answer. Actually, okay. Will you give your son the Lebanese passport passport before he's 16? And would you let him play with Lebanon as a national team player? Would I let my son play? Yeah, if if my son was – if he was able to get a passport, like, had dual citizenship. He's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. Legally, he's able. But you have to give him the Lebanese passport before 16 so he can play locally in the league. Yeah, if – if if because I'm – like, I, I would most definitely use that option, like, if, if I had the chance. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would let my son – Tap in because look, man. Especially by the time my, because my son is only seven. He'll be eight in May, right? Like by that time, man, I think that the the basketball or the locals is gonna be even higher than what it what it is right now because they're getting to see more. You know what I'm saying? And and experience more than they did before. You know what I'm saying? With social media or whatnot. And I would like to thank uh, Jad Baraket for this question, by the way. Uh, Jay, uh, Sharb al-Assad asks you, do you remember the small court in Biblos under the bridge? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's yeah. your feeling yeah, playing that. home 
what's your feeling playing home at this court and what's your feeling playing as a as a guest at this court man when i started uh, i'll never forget our first game my first game playing in there uh when I was playing with Animal Ball, and I was just like, bro, where, where are we at? We ended up losing that game, too. That's a hard gym to play in. So uh, when I ended up going to Biblos, you know, like, we use that to our advantage, especially in the playoffs when we played Mutahead. Like, if we would have had home court advantage, we would have beat Mutahead that year. But they had home court advantage, so we had to play game five there. But, like, man, that that that, that gym under the bridge, man, that was – man, uh, that was my spot, man. I, I loved it there. And it's a guy that worked there. Isn't it? I used to call him Pops. Man, if he watching this, I'll tell Pops. I'll say, what's up? RBH asks you, uh, you were a coach in Michigan High School All-Star game last week. Uh, what do you think mm-hmm. about Nassim, Mo Mashur, and Mo Hub-Hub? Man, so, I, yeah, one of them was on my team. The other one was on the other team. I think both of them are good. One's, I think one going to Central Michigan, the other one going to Oakland. But that's funny because I asked him. I'm like, I said, yo, y'all uh, – I said, when y'all done, I said, Riyadi going to be calling y'all, huh? And they both just, like, kind of bust out laughing when I said that. Uh, I don't think they they knew that, you know, I had played in Lebanon, or they probably heard of, my, of me, but we had, you know, good conversations last week. But both of them are good, man. Mo, he, sheesh, man. That's a tall guy, man. Real tall. Okay. Jay, uh, Wissam asks you, uh, the national team, did you watch the last Asia Cup? Um... I was keeping up with it a little bit. I, I didn't. I didn't see too many. Games. The one we lost against Australia by two points. I didn't see that one. I did not see that one. Okay. Uh, do you think in 2015 the FIBA Asia Cup? Do you think we should have done better than fifth place, maybe a semifinal or final? And did we have any chance of beating the Philippines team? I think we could have beat that team. We just didn't have the preparation, man. Like, and then. Uh, yeah, uh, the preparation it just wasn't there, man. Like some of those those guys have been together for months, you know, two months. Like I was talking to the guard from Qatar, they was training camp for two months, you know. And but I, I we most definitely should have finished higher than fifth, though, for sure. Jay Abbas asks you, uh, how did your transition from professional playing to coaching go? How did you do it? And um, are you thinking about coaching in Lebanon? That's a good question. Uh, it was tough at first, you know, because, you know, uh, connecting with the players, that's a whole different, it's a whole different conversation. And, and it's, you know, uh, you kind of got to adapt to their way of thinking. Um, still be the teacher, but you got to meet them halfway as, as far as connecting and whatnot. And that's one thing that I learned. Um, I wouldn't be against coaching in Lebanon. Like, I think that um, I could see myself doing that in the, like later, later on in the future because I like coaching. It's, it's fun. Um, just learning players uh, and just competing from that that standpoint. You know what I'm saying? Just knowing the game. Jay, one last question from me to you. Okay. Do you have unfinished business in Lebanon? Might we see you come back? I know you were thinking about it. I know you were thinking about it. You were thinking of playing again. Man, look, I'm going to be real with you, man. So I had to go do a basketball camp in uh, Austria and Germany at the end of uh, July, beginning of August. And I told myself, like, I'm going to go through this. I'm going to push my body to see how I feel as far as playing. So, like, I'm starting out, like, I'm already starting to train a little bit. So I want to see how I feel. If I feel that, you know, that my body is in, a, in is still in that, that shape to where I could, you know, play consistently back-to-back and not have aches and pains and all of that stuff, that I would consider it. Um but I gotta, I gotta see that first, man. So I know more around that time. But I never leave it out, man. Like I, I really, I miss it out there, man, for real. So uh, we'll see. Jay, thank you so much for your time. It's an honor to have you here. Once, once again, I told you, uh, Lebanese league legend. I always say having high level imports every year will give us more exposure. Will get us better imports next year. Our Lebanese players will get better. And thus, the final result will be having better international results. So, uh, so I really appreciate every import that comes to our league and helps our league develop. And you are one of the main reasons why we saw our league developing. The consistency you gave us for the past eight years. So, thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming here for the interview. 
Hey, what's going on? It's Jay Youngblood, man. I just want to thank the Overtime Podcast, man, for inviting me, having me over. Uh, I really, really enjoyed the interview, man. I had a great time. I just want to shout out everybody in Lebanon. I want to thank you for all your support over the years. Um, even while I'm gone, man, you guys still show love, and I really appreciate, appreciate it. I miss you guys. I hope to see you soon. Peace.